ahead and get started tonight. Um, glad you're with us this evening. Uh, let me give you, uh, I'm going to open us with prayer and, uh, and uh, before we have prayer, let me give you a couple of prayer requests. Miss um, Faye Wallace uh, took a fall and her hip that has come out before came out, uh, so they had to send her to the hospital. Uh, she did hit her head, they did a CT scan, everything come back good. Uh, and uh, but she is on her way home tonight, so uh, they got the hip back in and, and everything looks okay. So, but she'll probably be very sore for several days. So please pray for Miss Faye. Uh, also, Ethan shared with me that the Mantachi bowling coach, uh, his name is Steve Cooper, uh, had a motorcycle wreck, and they had to amputate one of his legs from the knee down. So we want to remember him as well this evening. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we come to you tonight and we thank you for uh, the morning service today and, and for all that you did. And uh, Lord, we thank you for your blessings and uh, thank you for your word. And so Lord, we just come to you tonight for Miss Faye. Uh, Father, we just, uh, we thank you so much how you watch over her and help her and protect her and Lord, we, we thank you that uh, she was able to get the help that she needed uh, in a timely fashion and that she's on her way back home this evening. Uh, we just pray, Lord, that you would continue to help her, Lord, with her legs and the, the many aches and pains that she deals with every day. And so, Lord, we also lift up to you uh, Steve Cooper tonight, Lord. We just pray that you'd be near and dear to him and close to him and his family. And, Lord, we just pray you'd comfort him during this time. And, uh, Lord, we ask that for, for healing in his body as well. And so, Lord, we just uh, uh, bring these to you. Many others, Lord, who are uh, uh, unable to be with us tonight, who are going through different physical ailments, how we just pray you'd minister to their bodies. And, Lord, we pray through it all that you would be glorified in it. And so, Lord, we t uh, ask tonight as well that you would bless our services, uh, bless uh, Jeb, Lord, as they present to us all that uh, you allowed them to do while they were away and uh, in them and through them. And we just give you thanks. In, uh, for all that you have done and, and we thank you for uh, the opportunity that they've had to minister um, in Cuba and Brazil and so Lord we just give this night to you and we pray that you are the one that is honored and glorified and we pray this in Christ's name amen let's go ahead and have our ushers come forward and we'll receive our evening offering This time, I'm going to turn it over to Jeb and uh, Brady and Jade are going to come first and talk to us about Cuba, and then after that, uh, Emma's going to come and talk to us about Brazil.
Ready me corazón to montaña correré de tu fuente beberé él es mi canción Ready me corazón to sembra mi guarará mi vida rescatará él es mi canción Vuelve es Dios Dios Oh, when we Dios, oh, when we Dios, oh, when we Dios, Dios, oh, when we Dios, oh, to vento me girará, se de la que tempestad, hell es mi canción. Rede mi corazón, se de fuego en mi ser, el eco de mi vivir, hell es mi canción. Bueno es Dios, Dios, oh. Bueno es Dios, Dios, oh, bueno es Dios, Dios, oh, bueno es Dios, Dios, oh, tú no me fallarás, nunca fallarás jamás, tú no me fallarás. Nunca fallarás jamás. Tú no me fallarás. Nunca fallarás jamás. Tú no me fallarás. Nunca fallarás jamás. You are good. You're good. Oh, you are good. You're good. Oh. You are good, you're good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down, you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down, you're never gonna let, You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You are good, you're good. This one? Okay, it's that one. Got it. Okay, we went to Cuba, if you didn't know. Hold on. First of all, hola, como hola. estas? Estoy, wait, no. No. Nope. Mi amo Jada, soy de Mississippi, tengo 18 años. Hola, me amo Brady, tengo 17 años, uh, soy de Mississippi, también. T tang <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing, go ahead. Okay. okay. That's just how we had to introduce ourselves every every church, service. everywhere we went, every thirty six like churches all, we went to. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it felt like. Anyway, <laughs> here was our team. There were eight kids, two adults. What? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I put little things by their name, but I'm just gonna go through. On the left is Callie from North Carolina, Kayla from Alabama, actually in Hamilton, not very far. Uh, Brant from Tampa, Florida. Trey from somewhere in Georgia. I think he's an alien, but anyway. Wait a minute. No, he said he's in that. He's on that line between Georgia and Florida, but it's not the state line. That's what he said. Just saying. I don't know. He's in the country. He's from the country. <laughs> McKenna's from Oklahoma, and you can tell because she calls soda pop. Anyway, <laughs> Bethany from Tennessee, and then Mary and Rodney were our leaders from Alabama. Alabama. Yeah. And so we started off with a week at Welch College. And where we just learned about different things. Yeah. <laughs> um, hold on. You, go, you can go ahead. Uh, so during uh, our training week, it's actually a lot of fun. You build, uh, play games with your team and stuff. But I actually have a funny story about training week. So 
Trey, the, that one, yeah, him. Let me tell you a funny story. We were at team training, guys, okay? And we were having a serious, like, come to Jesus meeting, like, laying down the laws. Boy's out here looking at the window and goes, oh, there's a deer. He starts, starts barking, barking at the at deer. It. Like, he, like, as a dog, starts barking at the deer. And we're just like, okay, that's whatever. He was definitely the most interesting character on the team, I'd but, say that. I mean, you're good. Go anyway. Ahead. So this is us playing Chicago. Is that how you say that? I don't know. Jade is not uh, in this because she was taking Caleb, a nap. like, broke his knee during this game. Anyway, leader doing a magic trick. McKenna's really good at balancing a water bottle on her head. I don't know why. I think she just has a flat head. Anyway, we just, like, stood outside and sang songs. Look at us. <laughs> These are funny pictures that I just thought I would add in. Uh, the girl on... <laughs> The girl on the right is on Emma's team, actually. And then that's McKenna on the left. I don't know. I thought these were funny. So I added them in. Adios, America. We were leaving. Uh, so the flight down there, we had a little struggle. It wasn't that bad. Apparently, we, we had to wait like an hour before we got on a plane because the power at the Havana airport went out. And they wouldn't let us in with the power out. So that was fun. We didn't know how long we'd be there. But we were only there for about an hour, so it wasn't that bad. This is when we got there. When you step outside the airport, like I felt like I went back in time, back to the future. All the like when I say all the cars looked like these, that's not that's not like an overstatement. Like they look like that. It's kind of crazy. Uh, this is the church we stayed at. We stayed, how many nights we stayed here? Like four or five. Yeah. Something like that. We stayed here for most of it. It's called La Lisa, which is funny because my mother's name is Lisa. Whoa crazy they thought that was cool too but this was a very nice church especially for cuba like this church is top of the line anyway we played ninja on the roof thought that was cool anyway this was my favorite part of the whole trip we had a teen service on the roof where we um we matched up with it was one american to two cubans and we had to like um we played a bunch of games and there was one game where we had to, like, describe what we did in a day. And I don't know about hers, but my two girls did not speak English. No, like, no English. So we had to use, like, hand signals to figure out, like, to do what their daily routine is. Really interesting. But that was, that was probably my favorite part of the whole trip. And this is me with uh, Ana Ilia. How do you say it? I said it wrong. I mean, it's just, we just call her Ana because it's too complicated. Anyway. Ana Ana? Whatever. Ana Julia. Okay, so um, that's the thing that we're holding is a Cuban dollar. And the boy that you see next to me, his name's Jordan. He's a 16-year-old studying to be a pastor. He speaks very good English. He was uh, our translator for s some of the night. Um, he actually wrote down on the dollar bill how he enjoyed having E-Team Cuba 2019 and that he said on the back, God bless us and stay in touch. He actually ripped that dollar bill up in nine pieces and gave us each one, and he kept one. So, yeah. Just to put that in perspective, um, Cubans, I'd say the average wage is $14 a month. Think about that for a minute. That's $1. That's a whole dollar. That's more than a day's work, and he ripped that up. So that, this, that whole moment was very special to know that he did that. This was a really cool church. I liked this church. The music at this church... I felt like I was in a movie or something. It was very Caribbean, and people were, like, dancing. It was great. I was singing at that church. Mm. This is a topic that I could talk about for a while. Uh, both me and Jada got a little sick on the trip. He lasted way longer than Brady. Yeah, but mine was bad, uh, I th partly due to the food. Now, the food... It was amazing, I will say that. But if you eat rice and beans for two weeks straight, your stomach does not like you. I'll just let you know. It was a rough time. But it mostly, like, most of our meals included uh, some sort of plantain, which are really good, by the way, but Jada doesn't like them. Okay, hold on. Let's, let's pause. The okay, I don't like bananas. So when they said eat a fried plantain, I didn't go for it. But it tastes like potato chips, so I like plantains. So if you ever, like, want to fry a banana for me, like, I'm down, so. A lot of rice and beans and a lot of pork and some chicken. We went to Havana. 
That was pretty neat. Oh, there's an interesting story about this picture. Um, where we were standing, about 10 feet away from us was a dead guy on the uh, side of the road. We're, well, we, we're pretty sure he's dead. <laughs> we we kind of looked over and we saw this guy laying on the ground and he wasn't moving. We kind of thought he was, you know, just passed out or something, but he was, something was happening. Anyway, back to the good stuff. Uh, this is another picture of us in Havana. So oh, the yeah. the girl, woman in the yellow, that is Veronica. Um, she is the... The, the Cuban Youth National some, Free Will Baptist yeah. leader. Yes. Something like that. She, so she does a lot with her youth group. Actually, when we were leaving, she took her youth group and other churches to a beach. And, like, they just dive in God's word. They spend hours on end just worshiping the Lord and just, like, their services are so completely different. And I should have mentioned that when we went back to that uh, one church. You don't have to. But... Their worship services are completely different. Every church we went to had a different style, and it was really cool. And uh, so she, her church, actually, the place that we stayed at in La Lisa, that's actually her home. Her home's on the bottom, and then if you go up the stairs, that's their church. Um, her dad is the pastor. So, yeah, that's all I had to say about that. That's all. Very pretty. A lot of cool things to see in Havana. I'm telling you, these cars, it's crazy. That's, um, I don't know his name, but that's a historical figure in the back. I'm pretty sure he's from Venezuela. And literally, you see him on almost every t-shirt. There's billboards. Almost everything is him. Or Fidel Castro, but we won't get into that. We played soccer with Cubans, which I thought was really cool. I'm, I'm not a sport person at all, but I was like, I'm in Cuba. I'm going to play soccer. Jada did not play soccer. I sat in the grass. But that was really cool. There's some more soccer pictures later. We'll get into that. Okay, so my dad wanted me to add this. I'm very glad he told me to do that because uh, Mom and Pop Willie are the original Free Will Baptist missionaries to Cuba. They originally were in Panama, but they got kicked out of Panama. I don't really know. I don't remember the full story. But they, they founded the seminary that you'll see a little later that we stayed at for majority of the trip. What well, I just have a few pictures from it. And it was in uh, Pinar del Rio, which I have a little arrow. It's very tiny, if you can see it. So we only stayed in, the, in those little two regions, La, ha La Habana and Pinar del Rio. So we didn't go very far. But it, it was a long drive, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I felt like I needed to add this. So the bus was really something. We called him Rico, the na the bus, and uh, very bumpy. I'll tell you that. No AC, because why would you why would you put AC in a in a bus? Don't. Anyway, that was a fun time, and I I napped a lot on this trip, a lot. I took five naps in one day. It's actually funny because. Every time we'd go somewhere, poor Brady had his backpack in his lap, and he was, like, squished up. And, like, every second you'd look over, he'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> I was so tired all the time. I think I blame the heat. Oh, here's me playing soccer again. Oh, it looks like I'm about to do something good, right? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that shows you anything. Uh, th th this is the seminary. That's about the only full picture I have of the seminary. But uh, very pretty animals everywhere. They have a crocodile. Pretty neat. That was a lot of birds. A bird pooped on me. I'm still not okay from that. <laughs> they actually have, um, if you, okay, you can't tell because Brady didn't do it, but um, there's a house on this side, and behind the house is where we had breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and there was a farm, okay? This was a petting zoo. There were pigs. There was a crocodile. There were birds. A lot there of chickens. There were chickens. So many chickens, and they're so loud. And there so was loud. a buck and a deer. Or a doe, not a deer. They're both deers, but a doe, okay? <laughs> so, like, I mean, I had to kill frogs to feed to the crocodile, guys. Like, I'm just saying. This is us at Vignales, which, this place. The next picture I have is better quality on my phone. I don't know why it decided to be blurry, but it's blurry. But this place was beautiful. And uh, we actually went zip lining somewhere in this region. It wasn't in this place, but... So, um, during E-Team week, training week, we had a song called So Will I. 
And um, to see those mountains, in the song it says, if the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. And every time I like was over there, I just sang that song because it just kind of moved me. And honestly, that was honestly my favorite yay God moment or thank you God moment. And there were so many of them, but I just remember being alone for a good like five minutes at Vanale. It's just standing at the mountains and I'm just sitting there and I'm like, okay, like this is it. This is amazing. And yeah, but go ahead. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. We also went to the beach. We went twice actually. This is the worst beach, but um, the worst of the two, not the worst, the worst of the two. The other one was very pretty, but uh, my camera actually died like three days in and I couldn't get any more pictures. But our leaders uh, were photographers. Anyway, long story. This picture also turned out blurry, but Jada can talk about this one because this was her, her big thing. Yeah. Okay, so this was Saturday. No, it, it was Saturday. So we went with, um, <clears throat> we stopped by a church who had a missionary to help disabled children. Children are my forte. We all know this. So they had a little program for us. They did their program for us. We did our program for them. And at the end, we had to make balloon animals or attempt to. Or if you're Brady, none at all. Anyway. She's not wrong. So <laughs> I can't argue. Um, I make a mean balloon sword, by the way. So that's just saying. <laughs> but this was my favorite hands-on activity that we did. Um, the kids were happy. They were singing, you know, and just to be in a presence and be like, thank you, God, for making me more humble. Because here, I learned the difference. I think we all, our entire team learned the difference between joy and happiness. Some Christians, yeah, you are happy, but to be joyful all the day with so little, no matter what, and give thanks for everything is amazing. And I honestly feel like, even myself, that we just take it for granted sometimes, and we just put on this front that, yeah, we're happy, but are we joyful? And at the end, it was just really amazing to see that we, eight teenagers, could put a smile on kids' faces, and then to know that we made their parents happy for making their kids happy, just by a couple balloon animals, or swords, a hat, a dog, and a flower. Like, I didn't just, make them, I went. <laughs> just little things like that, and it just opened my eyes, and this is actually the moment I realized that I honestly wanna work with kids. I've always known it, but like, it was never for a, it was never for God, it was for me. But I honestly realized in that moment that my life isn't for me. It's for everybody. It's for me to just be a light. And that's just something that really opened my eyes that day. And it was my favorite. And I love those little kids. And I can't wait to go back to see them. I'm, I'm going to try not to be too long because I want to give Emma all the time she needs. Because I know she, I know she wants to talk too. She wants to get into it because I, I really want to get into it. Anyway, um, when I say the Cubans have joy, it, these people have nothing like almost nothing, but they will give you literally the shirt that they're wearing. They, w they will give you everything, even if they have nothing. So d there's just, there's something else about them. They still live on rations. Think about that for a minute. They get a certain amount of rice and a certain amount of beans a, a month to eat. And it's not very much, by the way, but, yeah. and that's what most people live on. We were walking down um, in Pinar del Rio, uh, doing some last minute souvenir shopping. And um, some, I left some of your guys' stuff there, by the way. Anyway, so when we got there, outside is this long line. And it's probably, like, from me to the water fountain of people trying to get into the grocery store to buy stuff. They have cards. You have a, a, um, an amount, a specific amount of what you can buy and how much. And when we went shopping, there was a card, and it told you how many CUC, CUCs. Say you say that's what we had to use because we were tourists. And then it, our price compared to their pricing was completely different. If we wanted something for six dollars, or see, say you says, it would be twenty six dollars in Cuban money, and that was just crazy to me. But another big thing is uh, they have one gas station, like not like one, but like one brand of gas station that's everywhere, and so 
it's like a monopoly. Like that gas station sets whatever price they want, or it's the government sets whatever price they want for it. Full government control of literally every part of life. And that was really interesting to see. This is another church that we went to. Um, yeah. This is us um, at, oh, do you remember what this church is called? I don't remember what this church is called, but uh, we stayed a night at this place, and we had another youth event. The youth events were great. That was my favorite part. And basically what's happening here is we had to um, act out different scenes from the Bible, and I'm acting out Jesus turning water into wine. That's what's happening here. And none of them three speak English. So yet again, we had to use a lot of hand motions and my very little Spanish knowledge to get us through that. Okay, so... So um, in this photo, uh, my arm is right there. That is Veronica, and that is our translator, Anna. So I'm going to spend like five minutes. Okay. So basically what it is is that my team and I, well, I'm not going to say that. I had some complications with my team in the beginning, and it was all my fault, honestly. But I honestly got to know them so well and to know that there's people in different countries going through the same thing as you and they have no one to relate it to was amazing. And I just grew really close to them. And um, Veronica is like a big sister to me. And we talk every day. We've talked for hours. We video chat. We catch up. And it's just amazing. And Anna actually um, lives three hours away from Veronica, so I don't get to talk to her as much. But that's just a friendship that I will never lose, and I am so excited to see them soon. So, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, this is Alejandro. He is a really good friend. He plays soccer. He does bass guitar. He, um, he actually goes to the same church as Veronica. He's in their praise team band, and that's all I have to say about him. So. Adios. This is... Um I think this is the church of, Le is it Leandro or Leonel? I, I always Leandro. get them confused. Leandro. Leandro's church. Leandro, that, that is an interesting man. Um, he stayed with us for the first few nights. He was in the guys' room with us, uh, spending the night. But this is his church that he pastors. Um, and the funny thing about him is he knows no English except for three, three words, which are, I love you, I love you. He, that's all he would say to us all the time. I love you, I love you. Well, that's so, what he said to them. He called me his daughter, so, like, I was oh, yeah. winning. He knew daughter, too. He was like, daughter! Yeah. Because she kind of looks like him a little bit. So, or it looks like yeah. his daughters. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. And thank you for letting us be able to do this. Yes, thank you really for helping it. us raise this money. And honestly, before we go over to Brazil, um, I just want to say thank you for your prayers because they worked. Thank you for putting your time and effort into not only me, Brady, and Emma, but to the youth and for Noah last year. I know he didn't do it this year because, you know, he went one year. But um, but I just want to thank you for just your prayers because, honestly, it wasn't so we could change Cuba or Brazil. It was so they could change us, for us to go and tell, for them to show. And to see – well, I haven't seen Emma yet, but, or – but I'm sure it was, I haven't, I haven't, anyway, but to see what these countries did to us, because I know when I came back, I was, my eyes were open, and I honestly was just like, that's it, like, I'm okay with this, and when Emma got back, actually, you can come up here now, it's your turn anyway, mm -hmm. when Emma came back, I remember she came back the day of, we were leaving, like, right, the closing ceremony, the day of, mm -hmm. she came back the day of closing ceremony, and um, I just remember like, just being so excited to see her. Hard to believe on that part. But, <laughs> but um, just to see her. And I just remember hugging her and just being like, how was Brazil? Like, I want to know what you learned. And let me tell you about what we did. And she has some pretty exciting news, right? Or do they know? You know? Okay. So, anyway, I'm just going to shut up. But, <laughs> but um, I was just really glad to be honored to go to Cuba, and I plan on going back in March for my spring break to serve some more. So that's just that. Good job, guys. Gracias. All right, so I'm going to try not to cough. I've been coughing for like four days, so I'm kind of like 
whatever. Um, so I mean Team Brazil. Um, I just threw a picture of um, all ten teams up there. Uh, these are my leaders, Danny and Karen Williams. I adore them. They are the sweetest humans. They live in Alabama, which I uh, forgot which part it is, but he pastors a church there. Um, sweetest people on earth. And their testimony is amazing. It's a really long story, but when they told us, I broke down crying. They're just amazing people, and they cared for us throughout the entire thing, and it was just awesome. So this is my team. The Okay, I'm going to start with the bottom from... Le yeah, left, left, y'all's left. The girl in the glasses, that's Maggie. She's from South Carolina. That's Olivia in the middle. She's also from South Carolina. That's Jessica. I will get into Jessica later. Um, the middle row on the left, that's Megan. Next to her is Roman. Next to me in the hat is Jacob. And then on my other side, that is Sarah. Oh, I forgot to say where they're from. Megan's from Tennessee. Roman's from Oklahoma. He also says pop. So Jacob's from Tennessee, and Sarah is from. I'll remember it. Okay, I just put Uncle Neil because I'm going to talk a little bit about Uncle Neil. This man, I cannot tell you how much he cares about missions. He has a heart for missions, and it is just like it shows. He. He's always happy. He's always, you know, you never know if he's down. He j he's always just got a smile on his face. And, oh, you want to do that? No? Okay. Anyway. We, have a, we have an inside joke anyways. But um, he's just an amazing guy, and I'm very grateful that I got to meet him and that he's with I am, and yeah. All right, so this is the day we were leaving. We had three flights from Nashville to Orlando, and then from Orlando to Brazil. That's some of Brazil. That was in Sao Paulo. This is just some money. Um, I forgot how it goes back from American to, I forgot, I'm sorry. But yeah, I thought it was really neat to see different kinds of money because I've never seen something like that. It's cool. So I'm going to talk a little bit about their food and stuff. I didn't get a picture of, like, our meals because I I just didn't didn't think of it. But they drink lots of coffee. That's pretty much, and just like Cuba, they drink a lot of coffee. They drink them in little cups, so about like that. So it's like a little, like, espresso shot. Very strong. It's extremely strong coffee. You don't need anything in it. You just drink it black, and it's you'll be fine. Um, yeah, it's very strong. They're, so I'm going to talk about, like, our meals. Every single day, every meal we had, steak, white rice, and bread. And then we drank Coca-Cola and their, um, like, Brazilian drink, Guananan. So it, it's like a ginger ale. Y'all, it's so good. I wish I could have brought some back because that stuff's amazing. But, yeah, we drank that. We drank soda. They don't have – they have filtered water, but it's very rare that they drink it with meals. So we drank soda every meal, every single day while we were there. Kind of got old, but, you know, it's Okay. Um, their steak and their meat, amazing. I've never, ooh, it was so good. But, yeah, we ate all that every day, and I wasn't complaining because I grew to like it a lot, unlike Brady and Jada who got sick from it. But uh, this is just some cakes that we had. <coughs> I'm sorry. One day, again, um, the guy in the picture, that's Giancarlo. He's the pastor at the church, uh, at one of the churches that we visited. There he is serving coffee. This is an avocado that we found. Their avocados are huge. They have a lot of, like, different fruits. They have, like, star fruits and all these, like, crazy fruits. But that's an avocado, and we found it just laying on the ground. It, like, that picture serves it justice because that's how big it is. So we, like, in Brazil, they have lots of stray dogs, like, lots of them. I remember one time we were driving on the streets, and... I looked over outside the window, and there were two dogs, and both of them had one leg missing, and they were just walking. And I was, and I had never seen so many dogs in my life. It was crazy. This is a capybara. Uh, Jessica, the she's she's the entertainer of the team. She loves these things. She went nuts over them. She, 
she saw one one day and she was like, I want to see the capybara, I want to see the capybara, and she would not be quiet about it. They're basically a big rodent. They're, te they're basically the biggest rodent in the world. They have like hands and it's weird, it's creepy. I don't like them, but yeah. Okay, so this bird. This bird is so mean. We were at um, one of our Brazilian friend Lucas's house. No, 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 no. It was his father-in-law's house. Yes, his father-in-law's house. And then his father-in-law had this bird. I don't know its name. It was some weird name. But he would, he talks and stuff. And so we were like, okay, just a normal bird. No, this bird would pick up rocks with his beak and throw it at you. He would just like throw rocks. And so I'm surprised I even wanted to hold it, but I thought it was kind of cool. Okay, this thing. This was on the side of, the, of a camp building that we were at. It's a beehive. So, and my dad doesn't like it because he's like, that's freaky looking. But like, you see where that like little tip is at the end of it? That's where all the bees come out. So there's like thousands of bees just shooting out of it. It was wild. So this was the van that we were in some of the time. It was very bumpy and it was, yeah, it was a pretty cool ride. But along with like, like they're, that's kind of what their cars are sometimes. But Brazilians, they only drive stick shifts. So that's, and cause they can't really afford automatic. So that's all they drive. Y'all, they don't stop at stop signs. They just, they just go, they just, they don't stop. They'll pull you over if you stop at a stop sign. <laughs> and there's potholes in the road and they just drive like nobody's business. I have never seen such crazy drivers in my life. I thought I was a crazy driver, uh-uh, no. So I don't know if you can see that really good, but there's a lot of like garbage on the road. There's lots of, there was a lot of garbage where we were, but um, that's one thing I noticed. And then there's that and it was, Brazil's absolutely beautiful. If you like, it may like you may look at pictures and you're like, oh, that's not really that pretty. It kind of kind of looks dirty and kind of looks, you know, not like how we live here. It's beautiful. Like if you go to the right places, it's actually absolutely beautiful. That's just a picture at night. So this was a campground that we went to um, our second day. No, it was our first day that we were there. Um, yeah, this is one of the buildings. Uh, there was a church on that campsite, and this, this was the church that we were there on the last Sunday we were there. That was the church building. So we went to three different English schools. Um, we sang our mime, sang our mime, did our mime and sang our song. Um, y'all, these, the people there, I cannot stretch enough how just compassionate and how just welcoming they are like you know how like Mississippi's like the hospitality state is that right okay well like think of that but like times a hundred because Brazilians they're just amazing people and the kids there are incredible uh, I love each and every one of them this was one of the English schools that we sang and did our mime at it's really fun there are about 50 kids okay so this was after we had done all our things or whatever um, that's Jessica, and that guy right there, that's Estevo. He was one of our translators, and he was, he is a part of the church. Um, they, that kid went to Jessica. He spoke a little bit of English, so he, she was able to kind of understand. And he was like, I feel God telling me that I need him in my heart. And that kid got saved that day right there. And Jessica prayed over him in English, and then Estevo translated it into Portuguese, which was really, a really neat story. This was another English school that we went to, and Kenneth Eagleton, one of the missionaries in Brazil, he went with us to that one. Okay, this baby, his name is Azafi. This is Estevo's son. He's nine months old. Cutest little kid on earth. He doesn't like a lot of people. He didn't like me very much, which saddened me, as y'all probably know. But Estevo right there, amazing. He's He was absolutely incredible throughout the whole trip. He is just... Oh, I can't even get into that. This is Zafi. He's really cute. Okay, so this was the main church that we were at. Um, 
It's called Posto Sechi. I'm wearing one of their shirts. Uh, it held about 100, 150 people maybe. Um, so that was like one of the main churches that we went to. Their music, I kind of, their music is like insane. The first night we went, I was like, okay, this is going to be kind of chillax. It's going to be fine. Uh, they started playing, and my ear, my ears were like, they blew up. One of my, because my ear, my leaders were kind of older, so I looked, I was like, I looked at Danny, and I was like, I hope he's okay with this, because it's really loud. But um, it's one thing I noticed about them is they are very openly passionate about worshiping. And I sometimes they would stop the music and they would just sing they they would just sing it like a cappella and you would just hear the people in the back just singing in Portuguese and you would just think like this is what heaven's gonna be like just that's just a glimpse of what it is and I just thought like that was the coolest thing. Okay, so one Sunday, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was the second Sunday. We had baptisms. We had three that were baptized. That's a pool, yes, in the middle of the church because that's all they have. I just have some pictures. One of the, that is Duda, who's being baptized right now. She was our house sister, our host family's daughter. Um, she, it was really cool. The night that we came home that day, she, on none of our family spoke English. So she went to her phone translator, and she was like, I'm so blessed that y'all got to witness the best day of my life with me. And, like, that was really cool. We were all, like, crying, and it was fun. So three of them got baptized. That was pretty cool. Okay, that's Victor. So me and Sarah, the girl in the picture right there, he was in love with us, but he went back and forth, so he was very confused. He would, he would love me one day. He'd be like, oh, Emma, you're amazing. And then he'd be like, Sarah, I love you. And so it was, it was, it was really funny. Okay. I feel bad because I don't remember the kid in the middle's name, but the kid in the red, that's Pedro, and the other one is Artur, or Arthur in English. Um, sweet kids, just have a heart for the Lord at such a young age. I think they're 11, and uh-oh. Oh, is that it? No, that's not it. Okay, well, <laughs> apparently all my pictures aren't there no more, so... That's okay. That's okay. We'll improvise. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to remember my pictures. Okay, anyways, the kid. Yeah, you can go fix that. <laughs> so the kids there, one, the one in the red that I mentioned, Pedro, he was so sweet. He, that kid was just like, he was just so cute. And he, he was 11. He was really short. And he's like, he was just like really small, but he was really cute. And he, he, I was, like, his, like, best friend throughout the whole thing. I remember one night, he, him and our house sister were cousins, so he came to the house one night. And he brought his guitar, and he was playing, and he was just playing his guitar and singing. And I was just like, oh, this kid. And it was kind of close to us leaving. And he just, like, started tearing up. He's like, Pedro. I kind of just, like, looked at him. And he just starts bawling. And we just started all crying. And we just had, like, it was just, like, really cool moment to just, like, you know, it was just really neat. I'm, okay, I'm kind of like trying to think of. Okay, so like, when we got there, I thought we were going to do like, a lot more, but the churches there are very grounded. They're already very grounded churches, because like, the missionaries there have put in years and years of work to plant those churches and to grow those churches. And like, the missions of those churches that are there now, they're, that are grounded, they're trying to just get as many people as they can. So we would, like Esteva, one of the translators, he would just like see random people and he would just like go up to them and just like pray for them. And it was just like, it was really cool. I don't know what else to say because those slides were trying to help me. So. Oh, yeah. I made some brigadeiro, which is like a Brazilian dessert. If you want one, I will have them in the back after the service. So if you want to try it, you can. It didn't turn out how I wanted to. It, til it tastes amazing, but it, it's kind of sticky, so it's kind of a bit of a mess. But, but I just want to say thank you to everyone for your prayers and 
even if you didn't give any money, just uh, just thinking about us, it really means a lot, and it really meant a lot to us that you went out, gave money, and just everything you did was just very helpful, and it helped us a lot. Because I was very nervous to go, and I know your prayers helped a lot. So thank you. While we were at one of the English schools, I God had been pulling at my heart a lot um, for a few days. And while I was just talking to kids and just interacting with them, God was just like, missions is like something you need to be a part of. So call me to missions. I don't really know um, what that means in the future, if it's going to be a primary or a secondary. I'm not sure. But that's something I know God definitely wants me to do. So that's my announcement. Uh, before we uh, dismiss, um, what I thought I would do is have the have Jeb stand up here up front, and um, if they wanted, if you had any questions about the trip, um, uh, or if they, if as they have sat here, they may have thought about other uh, things that they did in the ministry part. I'll, and if you could talk about the ministry that you did, that would be great. Uh, if there's anything else you need to add to it. Um, but I didn't know if we had any questions for Jeb. Here. Right, here, here, here. Trey, the weirdo of our team. That's what we call them. Anyway, we were doing our mime one time. We only did our mime twice. And basically in our mind, it's like um, there's a bunch of sins surrounding one person. And all the sins, they had like cards in Spanish. And they were like lust, jealousy, that kind of stuff. And they were all surrounding this girl. And then I was Jesus. And I came up and I like did that. And all, this, all the sins fall down or whatever. And one time we were doing it in this pretty, pretty big church for Cuba. And, uh, but still small, way smaller than this. Um, so <laughs> Trey, w when he, f he was one of the sins, so when he fell down, he fell onto the keyboard at this church, and, and it was on, the keyboard came crashing down, and, and when the keyboard hit the ground, it made like a bang, and we were all like laughing during the whole rest of the, we didn't know if we needed to go on, and we didn't even talk about Daniel Lido. Daniel Lido is like, uh, the main person that took us around places. He was an awesome pastor. Anyway, he, he had to run up and hold the keyboard while we were doing it because it was just on the ground. So he came up and held the keyboard while we did the rest of the mime. That was an interesting story that happened. Anyway, any other questions? I, I've got a question. Oh, 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 you have a mic already. I, I'm, I'm mic'd. Oh. Um, so what type of, um, what type of ministry day-to-day -day, uh, did y'all do while y'all were there? Was it children's ministry vacation bible st uh, bible school style ministry what kind of ministry um in cuba we honestly we didn't have hands on ministry with the like with people for us it was more of a come see how well they've grown in different churches and spots but um we did do like the disabled children's um we went to a nursing home we went to the free will nursing home they're actually trying to uh, they had bought a space, and they're trying to build onto it and add onto it. And that's actually one of the projects I hope I can help with in March when I go back for. Uh, but um, what else? Uh, but we didn't really have a chance to be hands-on, nitty-gritty, um, like speak. We just did our. We just went to different services and just kind of did that. So. We, um when you think of mission trip, you kind of think like digging holes and painting walls and then like going out and love Jesus like that. But um, Cuba was very different because they are already, they're doing great. They, they might have like financial needs and, but we, there's no way we can really solve that. So um, the, um, 
So, yeah, we were basically there to encourage them and, like, help them keep going. One interesting thing I will say, um, at one of the churches we went to, uh, the, the pastor there is actually going to be a missionary to uh, Uruguay, which I thought was really interesting that, like, in our brains it's kind of like all missionaries are American, you know? You know what I mean? Like, we have, we have a small picture of a missionary. But I thought it was interesting that this guy that was born and raised in Cuba is going to Uruguay to preach the gospel. I thought that was neat. Anyway. To answer your question about Brazil, majority of what we did was the English schools, but I remember it was the second English school we went to, and Estevo, our translator, he, after our mime and our song, he would always uh, talk to them, and we had no idea what he was saying the first time because he would say it in Portuguese to all these kids. The second school we went to had, we, it was uh, elementary, middle school, and high school, but in, at different times, so we had like three different times where we would do all that. And so it was with the middle school kids uh, that Kenneth Ingleton, he went with us. He decided to translate it in English for us. So while Esteva was talking to them, we were understanding what he was saying. And we were, we had, the first time we were like, okay, he's probably just like, we didn't know what he was talking about. And when Kenneth translated, we all break down crying because we're like, this is the gospel that he's giving to these kids. And he would always have them raise their hands if they felt like, you know, Jesus was talking to them or if they wanted to ask him to their heart. And I remember the middle school, I'm not kidding, probably 15 to 20 kids raised their hands asking Jesus into their lives. And that was like one of the coolest things I've ever experienced. And I don't think I'll ever forget that moment. So that's the majority of what we did. A lot of, you know. Well, uh, mostly going to Cuba, you get humbled, I'll tell you that, because um, just seeing what they have and then seeing what they give, like um, a lot of people that have more money don't give as much, but um, when you see poor people or people that have less give literally everything they have to... um, to one goal and to one purpose. That was really inspiring to me. And um, just the the joy of the people there because they are nonstop smiling and they're nonstop cracking jokes all the time. We were talking about um, Leandro, the one that says, I love you, whatever. Um, we literally had no idea what he was saying half the time, but you could tell it was funny. <laughs> you, you could just tell that everybody had a smile on their face at all times, even whatever they're going through, they're always smiling and they're always happy. So I thought that was cool. Um, I learned that I need to stop living how I want to live. That's been one of my biggest issues is doing what I want to do. It's on my terms. It's not. It's all in God's timing. It's in his hands. Whatever he wants to do in my life, that I'm, I'm a follower. That's, you know, that's what following him means is if he pulls at your heart at something, listen. Don't ignore it because you want to do what you want to do because that's all the Brazilians do is they're listening, and it's, it's working because they're growing the church, and it's, yeah. I'm trying to think. I learned a lot, actually, so I'm not going to do that. Um, The main thing I learned, and that really opened my eyes, is that, is like I said, about humble, not humble, uh, happiness, and being, like, the difference between being happy and joyful. And like Brady said, the Cubans... They would give you the shirt off their back. They would give you their shoes. Like, they just want you to feel loved and cared about. I, I remember landing in Cuba, and I'm like, we're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> like, I'm scared. And the airport people, they weren't that nice, but that was their job. But when we met the ones that were welcoming us, like, you could feel the love. They just, 10 Americans, in a foreign country and you're just showering your love. Like we don't understand what you're saying, but you're just shining your light. And it was amazing to understand and just to see how thankful and grateful they were for so little. And I remember our last night, this is one of the most things I learned is that 
they had to, the Cubans that were with us had to go back to their daily lives to just rice and beans. They didn't get what we had. They didn't get our um, meat or our dessert. They had rice and beans. Um, the the day we left, we they they ate what the seminary students had. Um, I couldn't, but I sat there and just thought all they could eat was a roll of bread, a little bit of coffee, and Kool-Aid. And I just sat there and I was like, wow, I take sushi for granted, like, you know? But just, I'm gonna work on, and my number one thing that I wanted to learn about is just to humble myself and be more joyful than I am happy. Because living for the Lord, you should be joyful. You should have and show joy. You shouldn't just be like on a hot day complain that they didn't do that. And I just feel like that's just a good thing that we learned. But yeah, I'm gonna say one more thing. Uh, back to like their music and stuff. When they would sing, they would go all out in worship. They were not holding back at all. They were just hands up. Some of them were jumping. And they had no care in the world. They don't care who was looking. They don't care that, you know, Americans were in there. So, like, if we're worshiping, however you worship, don't hold anything back. Like, that's something I've learned because I'm, I'm a very reserved person. And so, like, I've, I'm trying to learn to, like, you know, get out of my shell, get a, stop being uncomfortable. Because not everything's going to be a comfortable situation. But if, if you feel like raising your hands, then raise your hands. If you feel like jumping during a worship song, then jump. Because, like, who cares? You a, know? Side note, a side note to her about our, the worship, um, when we were at training week, that was literally so eye-opening also. Because, okay, I sing, yeah, we know. And I praise the Lord when I sing. I don't, I don't know if you people tell, can tell, but I can. And well, during that week, I just, like, let loose and just, I, I let go and let God, honestly. Like, if he wanted me, if I felt the need to raise my hand, if I felt the need to just sit and pray like I did that because we're there for the same purpose we're there to serve and one thing that I learned also is that wherever you go you go to serve and not be served you don't want people you don't you shouldn't expect people to do certain things for you you take that for granted and honestly that was just it was amazing to understand and to know that when you are serving, people follow. They don't follow you, they follow your light. And then they learn that they can be a light to others. And it's honestly amazing to do that. I'm gonna add another thing, oops. Yep, so back to the music. One cool moment for me was, um, it was our first day at the seminary, and uh, Daniel Lido was, we were doing a service, and Daniel Lido was preaching. Also, they. They just like meet for service on like a Tuesday. That was really interesting. Like we would just show up on like a Monday morning to some place and there would just be like 30 people there. That was weird to me, but that was really cool. Um, but we were, one of the things we said, we sung, I think both of our groups sang Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. We were there, we sang Amazing Grace and this guy stood up and was like, like uh, everybody was sitting down and he stood up and was like getting so into it. When's the last time y'all raised your hand at Amazing Grace? been a while <laughs> you don't count <laughs> but yeah I thought that was really cool like a song that we like just sing over and over again is kind of like an eye roll song but they like they got into it with Mr. Jamie one more thing that I learned in Cuba they are always late there is something called a standard like your time like a set time and then there's a Cuban time and let me just tell you okay so if we were gonna leave at 8 I expected to leave at 8 30 okay because like I learned I was quick like, that was just another thing I learned. Like, time, oh, whew. All right. Huh? Any other questions? Oh. <laughs> no, go ahead. Oh, any oh, questions? questions. Any, any, any questions? No. Okay, I'm just going to say one thing. Um, some of you, like, Kaylee and, like, the younger ones, y'all are probably like, I could never go to, like, a different country. And it may not be your heart's desire to get on a plane, spend a bunch of money, and go on a mission trip somewhere out of the country. You're serving right here in Fulton. It does not, you do not have to go to Brazil or Cuba or wherever to serve the Lord and do his work because he's called all of us to 
be servants, and it doesn't matter where you are or how old you are, you can serve him. There would be little kids in Brazil who were serving the Lord, who were singing about Jesus and going out and praying. And so that's just, I want to give y'all a thought about that. Oops. Sorry. Um, I also want to point out, like, for some reason, we've gotten all Latin American countries so far and Chicago. But I want you to know, there's 10 places that E-Team go, or E-Team went this year. They kind of change it up sometimes. But let's just go through them all. Okay, Chicago, St. Croix, it's in the U.S. Virgin Islands, Cuba, Panama, Brazil. Then you got um, uh, Spain, uh, France, Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan. That, that still kind of scares me a little bit. <laughs> and then Hokkaido and Tokyo, Japan. Like, these are all places that people like us went. So I just want to point that out, that, it, like, we, we've just somehow been blessed with two Brazil and two Cuba and one Chicago. And so, yeah, that might be, that might be a sign. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I just want to point out that they're everywhere. All right. Well, if there's any other questions, uh, just see them after service, and they can do that. And uh, so thank you so much for being with us tonight, and I will close us in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much again for this evening. We thank you for uh, what we've heard, and we thank you, Lord, for, uh, again, the opportunity that they have had to go and, and share the gospel and uh, minister to, to uh, children and teens and adults. And, uh, Lord, we just give you the praise for that. Uh, Father, we thank you for Fulton Free Will and their dedication and uh, of supporting our young people and uh, we just thank you for that and lord we just pray as we leave this place that um, that you would use all of us this week lord that we would be open to um, ministering to those around us and uh, father i pray that you would help us and give us strength and courage to do so and so lord we just thank you again in christ's name